Let me scoot to that. <laughs> Hello, my name is Trina. I'm a medical cannabis patient. I partake of cannabis on a regular basis for PTSD, arthritis in both my knees and ankles, social anxiety, and a few other conditions you can learn more about through watching the previous shows on this channel. This is a cannabis connoisseur. <laughs> this is the productive cannabis connoisseur, a channel dedicated to medical cannabis patients and adults 18 and over. So. As you can see how I botched up my introduction, I'm feeling kind of worn out today. Um, I started off the morning early doing a lot of cleaning up and organizing, <clears throat> and mainly so that I could find uh, the cord to this thing. Let me show you, but I'll be right back. To this thing here. And this thing will store uh, my files in there because my computer is clogged. So if you see like a delay in videos, like the videos are behind, it's because I have to like find a way to delete the videos or the photos that I don't need in order to create more storage. Because I can't find the cord for this. This thing hooks up to my laptop. So if you see a delay in it, that's why. And um, I was having a hard time actually finding this and my son found this for me yesterday. But it doesn't have the cord with it. So I'm going to probably have to buy another cord, cord with that. So if there's a delay in videos, you'll know why. On this channel and on my other channel, Dark Moon Doll. So. <clears throat> but what I really wanted to talk to you guys wasn't about that. <laughs> it's about um, this project that I've been working on. And I'd like to share it with you. I've been sharing with you a little bit about this art project. But um, I wanted to share a little bit more. Um, so... I'll keep that a mystery until we get into after we get into the smoke session. So let me grab my smoking stuff and we'll get to it. Let's see. This thing's not so close by. <laughs> so the music is playing. I'll have it in the links below. Try to remember to do that. It's just some um, relaxation type Tibetan type of music. So if you guys are wondering what's going on in the background. Yeah, I'll put the link to that in the description too. So we've got the lighter, and I think I'm gonna do. Uh, I think I'm gonna smoke a joint because this is uh, appropriate for the um, the piece of artwork I'm gonna show you. And the reason why I show you my artwork is so that it can inspire you all to create something yourself <clears throat> instead of just smoking a joint and just like doing nothing. Maybe you can do something with that creativity that you feel inside of you when you partake of cannabis. So um, I gotta grab a pair of scissors because sometimes when I roll it in the roller, I have paper on the end left over. And I think that's probably because I'm not lining it up correctly. So it's my error. So I'm just gonna cut some of this off on the end. So here we go. Is it? So what did I put in there? I put that strain that I've been smoking for the past few days that they called house for my delivery. And then I put, um, no, nah, I didn't put anything else in it. <laughs> That's it. It's an indica strain, so yeah. Let me move this out of the way. Yeah, I'm using my PlayStation to play music on YouTube. <laughs> I do that. I, I use the PlayStation 2 for video because my Roku is getting too overly heated, so. I just switch over to the to the PlayStation. Okay, I got my lighter there, joint there, and all I need now is uh is an ashtray. So where's the ashtray? All the way over there. Alright, I'll be right back. Ah you get to see my cool canvas pants. Alright. Here we go. Little heart ashtray. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying your Saturday. That's what day it is for me today, right now, Saturday. And yeah. right in the middle of doing laundry and drying clothes and, as I said, organizing and trying to find things. Because <laughs> ever since we moved, we moved about a little over three months ago into this new place we're staying at, house. And um, we're still trying to sort through everything. So, yeah. All right, cheers guys. Thanks for joining me today for Canvas and Creativity. Hope you enjoy it. And I hope you guys are doing some creative. You could even be watching this and doing something really creative for all I know. If you are, leave it in the comment section below. Cheers.
You know what I forgot to do? I forgot to turn on the fan. Let me do that really quick. I'll be right back. Alrighty then. There is much better. I just don't want to cause any smoke detectors to go off unnecessarily. Got my water, uh, pencils, and everything over here. Um, what else? Maybe I'll turn on the other fan just to be in case, just to be um, careful. <laughs> Words are coming out today. There we go. Okay, that's good. Now we got two fans going, so I think we're good to go. All right, let's get a smoke session going. Once again, cheers, everyone. <laughs> oh, that's delicious. One more tug. Tastes very perfumey. Smooth. All right, put this to side. <coughs> <coughs> Have some water. Oh, yeah, that's good. So the art piece in question I wanted to show you is this. I've been showing you this uh, here and there. Um, I still have a little bit more to do on them, like the bottom lip right there where the seam is and needs to be sewn in better. <clears throat> but I got the basics of him all together. Um, he's like a, a mystical, psychic, um, African, African shaman and medicine man because he likes the ganja. He likes cannabis for healing. So he's a healer, basically. And there's like an amanita mushroom coming out of his hat in the back. And then on the sides, these are hand-sewn um, fabric beads of eyes coming out of his hat. So what I wanted to show you, not just this doll, this doll head. I'm still debating on if I want to make it a full body. I just kind of like it as a doll head to hang up. But um, <laughs> and it's pretty heavy, hefty. Not too heavy though, it's probably about a five pounder. <laughs> but yeah, I wanted to show you that what I did, I was like, oh, you know, it'd be cool. Like I've been saying that I want to do stories to go along with the dolls that I make. <clears throat> I was talking about that in a previous video not too long ago. And uh, here's the drawing that I made. Let me just sit him in my lap like that. <laughs> here's the drawing that I made of him. It's a little quick drawing that I did. It's not like pro or anything, but it's a little quick drawing. And then I did a quick sketch of him. If I were to make him like a full on like a body, this is what I can imagine him looking like. And his story. <laughs> this is a quick sketch. It's not anything as elaborate as most of my drawings like this drawing. <laughs> But yeah, you see what I mean. It just like it was a quick sketch. <clears throat> just to get an idea of what he is all about. He's a medicine man. He's a shaman. Um, spiritual dude. Healer. So yeah, that's the drawing I did. I think I might want to, you know, add some shading to and color it in. And it'll go along. Both of these little drawings will go along with this one face. So yeah, I'm I'm thinking about doing that with in the future with as many dolls as I can. I'm not going to promise that I'll do them with every single doll, but it's nice to have a story along with the doll. And <clears throat> what whoa, what kind of message this doll is trying to bring forth? So all of this is made from recycled fabrics, all of it. The browning part on here, I just used a whoops, a Crayola marker on there to make it a little browner, but um, yeah, it's all used, used, um, I'm recycled fabrics, um, from different sources, really. And there's the evil eye hand. <laughs> I think this one, yeah, this not, I think, I know, this one was coffee stained, so, yeah. The hand, the material that I used for the hand was coffee stained. 
and it's all hand sewn. So, what I'm gonna do, and that's a that's just stitching. If you see in little bits of yellow, what I've been wanting to do is make him some beads for his dreads. Um, <clears throat> I always end up making beads that are too small, though. Uh, I recently made some Rasta beads um, that I put on my shop, but I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to use those, of course, because they're on my shop, but I was thinking about making some of those, because <clears throat> I feel like that would add a finishing touch to his look, would be some beads. Um, <clears throat> I think I kind of want to do, like, some beads that are in the theme of, like, skulls, so I was thinking about working on some of that live on this channel, on this show, so... If you guys are game for that, that's cool. Um, just to have um, a little extra something going on with him to bring on his, bring about that image of a healer. Um, I don't know, beads are very um, healing to me. Certain beads, I've got one bead in my dread right now that I made myself, it's from uh, polymer clay. If you can see that, but yeah. I wear beads in my hair here and there, um, or a dread sleeve or two. I have two dread sleeves. One's an Ankh, and the other one is the Eye of Horus, which is, can I take my, take off my scrunchies? <laughs> you can see I got it. So, yeah, yeah. But, where's the Eye of Horus? And here's the Eye of Horus. Can you see that? You can barely see it. I'll show it to you. It was a dread sleeve that was made for me a long time ago. Um, it's really beautiful. I love it. And I've had it for ages. By this woman named Naughty, Naughty, uh, Naughty Sleeves? K-N-O-T-T-Y Sleeves. And she makes these uh, dreadlock sleeves. <clears throat> I'm not sh I think she's still making them, and then she made this one too, the Ankh, that I was showing you, so, yeah, she's very talented in that way. She made my son, um, I think it was a, is it an Earthbender one? An Earthbender, um, dread sleeve for his dread, um, for his dreads, he has dreadlocks, my son does, so, and the Earthbenders all connected with, uh, with that anime called Avatar, so, where there's, there's tribes representing different elements, earth, air, fire, and water, so it's pretty cool, if you ever get a chance to watch it, Avatar is pretty cool, they made a movie, live action movie, and, and I thought it was crappy, it was, it went way too fast, they didn't take their time with it, and yeah, the characters playing the parts of the people in it just didn't match, so. All right, so what I want to do is I want to make, uh, I want to make some skull beads for his dreads <coughs> because shamans go, <coughs> they travel between life and death, the living and dead <coughs> <coughs> when they're doing soul retrievals, when they're trying to help people retrieve their souls and figure out what their mission is here on this planet. So, uh, that's been my understanding of what a shaman does. Especially when shamans partake of what people would call hallucinogenic uh, substances. They don't just do it just so they can have a trip and see, you know, really cool colors and shapes, which is probably cool in itself too. But they're doing it, they have a main focus of when they're going into this trance and helping the person that they're helping to heal. They're going in there with a specific focus of what they want to do, what information they want to get. So that's what happens on a shaman's journey from what I, um, from what I gather. I've had some what I, I consider shamanic experiences in my life, definitely. <clears throat> I've talked about them in other videos, but if you would like for me to mention more, just put that in the comment section below. <laughs> So yeah, let me grab some fabric. I'm gonna show you basically how I would do that. Cause this isn't the first time I made a skull bead. 
on fabric. A fabric is going to be it. So this fabric, um, this fabric's clean. It just has, it's just stained. It has this, this like pinkish stain on it, but it's clean. And like I said, I use recycled fabrics, meaning that I do wash the fabrics before I use them, so you won't be getting any dirty items. So rest assured on that. <laughs> be very well washed, cleaned, and dried thoroughly. So <clears throat> a lot of people worry about that when they uh, decide to purchase something that is handmade, hand sewn, and the usage of recycled fabrics is involved, people start to get suspicious. So basically what I'm doing is just folding this fabric up and trying to see um, how big I want it. So when I measure the, the beads for a uh, dreadlocks on a doll, on a doll head, on a doll's head, it's best to um, bring the doll over to you, like I'm doing now, <laughs> and um, just kind of wrap the fabric around the doll's dread. That way you get an idea of how much fabric you need. It looks like this isn't enough, unless I spread this out and do this. Because I don't want it all raggedy looking, so I'm just kind of folding it over. And then seeing how much fabric I need to make a bead for them. So, okay, I get an idea of how much fabric I need so that it'll fit on there. You can also mold the bead on to the dreadlock. And I think that's what I'm going to do. So, I'm just going to tuck it in here like this. And then I'll, um, I'll even embroider the bead right on to do the embroidered design right on to the bead sewn on to the dread so that's what I'm doing see that okay <clears throat> the job the dolls that I make are not supposed to be interactive where you can pick them up and swirl them around like a toy because they're not a toy they're spiritual um, objects they're not toys they're pieces of artwork and uh, I don't know I just keep coming back to remembering that experience where someone allowed me to display my artwork in their gallery and I had this really beautiful doll that I I spent quite a while making years actually making and I finished it and put it out for display and I can't believe she took a photo of a little girl swirling it around like it was a Barbie doll or a, you know, a doll you get at a toy store and that's the thing people whenever they think dolls they think toys and that's not always what's going on and the, the history of the doll going way back wasn't meant for a plaything it was a spiritual object a lot of the dolls had different meanings to them a lot of dolls represented different gods or goddesses <clears throat> and the dolls would have within them what what the creator would consider the essence or the energy of that god or goddess within that doll. If it's not a god or goddess, uh, a healer, a shaman, which is a healer, same thing. So, so all I'm doing is I'm sewing it on here. Let's see. If you guys, like I've said before, if you guys need a simple tutorial on how to um, thread a needle and sew um, him on a pant, just basic, like, basic sewing, you know, 101. <laughs> I have some videos on my Dark Moon Doll channel you can check out. So <clears throat> you, could even, you can even offer up suggestions for sewing you know, sewing, future sewing classes, or not classes, future sewing shows. Um, I, I don't claim to be an expert sewer. I've just been sewing by hand for many years. I never got a really good working um, sewing machine. I had a sewing machine for a while, but it didn't work. We got it used, so. And my history with sewing on a sewing machine was uh, all the way back to when I was... I believe 15 
and my sister had a sewing machine and my sister was really good at sewing one of my older sisters I just didn't have the patience for it back then when I was a teenager um, I just didn't we worked on I decided I wanted my first project sewing project it was I decided I wanted to create this just a simple skirt and uh, I found a pattern for it and she was willing to help me out with it and um, I was almost towards the end of finishing it but I just I just didn't have it in me because it was like really early like two o'clock in the morning or something and so I was just like I'm done I can't do anymore <laughs> she was a little disappointed with me on that but <clears throat> whatever I just wasn't into it back then and you can't you can't force something so let me show you what it looks like. I sewed so that it's going to be like a dread sleeve or something. So like that. I'm just show you the basics and the rest of it I'll finish off camera because there's no way I could finish all this on camera. <clears throat> yeah. The kind of art I do does it's not done in seconds. So <laughs> But here we go. So that's how it looks when you sew that on there for a dreadlock bead or sleeve. And then um, if you want a specific design, you can actually draw the design on with Sharpie. Let's see if I have a Sharpie in here. I usually do. This time I don't have a seed line in here. I'm going to grab a Sharpie. I'll be right back. And then I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. Let's let him have him keep you company. <laughs> uh. Gotta make sure I don't run over because uh, my phone, my camera phone, uh, stops recording after I think 45 minutes. So we're doing okay. We're at the 22 minute mark. So all right, he kept you company. I haven't thought of a name for this guy yet. Maybe we can vote on a name. <laughs> so I'm gonna draw a skull on here with a, um, a sharpie pen, and it's a fine tip. A fine point pen. I uh, I like doing that when I wanted to get an exact um, design, as much exactness as I can get. So I wish I could point this to you so you can see what I'm doing. Maybe if I bring the camera over to the side over here, and you can see more of what I'm doing. Oops. So I'll put him right here. There we go. That might that might work. So what I'm going to do is draw a skull on here, so. Sorry if I'm not, you know, my two, my, it's not really a tutorial, but just kind of showing you a demonstration on how to do it. I'm sort of they're not really professional, but that's the best I can do for now. So I'm just drawing a skull on there. And you could draw whatever designs you want on these. Um, whatever fits with, um, the subject matter of the doll head. So, this subject matter has always attracted me, but for a long time, like especially when I was younger, I didn't uh, draw skulls. Well, I did draw them, but I would hide them, like skulls and snakes and things of that matter, things that I was really attracted to as far as art. So, there is a skull right there. <clears throat> and if I wanted to, I could put one on on the side here so you got the skull right here i could put one on this side and then put one on the back just kind of continuing the whole um the whole pattern of the skull on the dread sleeve so we go make another skull here and it doesn't have to be perfect when you draw the outline of it you're just trying to get a basic idea of the area you want to cover with a thread that you want to sew embroider with thread because this is going to be embroidered that's why I'm doing this if I didn't mention that <laughs> so yeah you've got the skull there you've got the skull there and then I'm going to make a skull over here so when you're working on this miniature of, of a scale you want to make sure you don't put too much detail in it with these skulls don't want to put too much detail I've done that before and Everything gets lost in the details and you don't know what the hell it is. You know, you can't tell it's a skull anymore. <laughs> so.
So I say I would recommend keep things simple. So I'm gonna so I've got a total of three skulls on here. And let's see. And then I for some reason I wanna put an X here. X one in there. And X's don't mean what most people think that they mean. Um, a lot of two people, well, some people, some cultures will associate the X with um, with death. Some people think it has to do with hexing someone. But you know what? What was really popular symbolism for that X shape was a sign for, um, <clears throat> it wasn't for all the things that people were thinking it was for, it was for fortune, like legacies, um, it's a runic symbol, so t as well. So, but you know, symbols are mean something all over the world, different things. So, so yeah, basically, what I'm gonna do, and I'll give you a little example of how to do this. <clears throat> I'm going to embroider an outline in black, outline it in black. That's how simple I'm gonna keep it, and so it'll just be a black and white type of dread sleeve on this magical shamanic healer's dreadlocks. So. But yeah, I wanted to add that because I figured I would add a little actual um, extra something to his personality and to his story. Um, we can vote on this. Do you think I should make it a full bodied uh, doll? Because <laughs> look, this is how, this is kind of the outline of what it would turn out like with more detail, of course. But that's pretty much how you would look like this. <clears throat> it would be cool to like uh, go all the way and make a full body one like this and uh, have the whole setting in the background. <laughs> so yeah, I, I really enjoy the art of making dolls. I really do. They've been very therapeutic. I've given away a lot of dolls too, um, as well as selling them too. But, you know, when someone gets a doll, it's a special thing because it's a spiritual object that you're bringing within your home and in your space. And it's a very powerful, powerful symbol to have within your space. Um, so whatever dolls that I give away or sell, that energy is within them, you know, that healing energy to help for whatever that doll symbolizes because I make so many different ones that look different each and every one of them you just put a little ash on you and dust it off I got it off kind of christened him huh <laughs> he likes it anyway because he loves to smoke too see <laughs> So yeah, let me show you this before the 40 minute mark comes along and bites us. I'm just using using regular old, um, this is a uh, cotton polyester thread, embroidery thread. I want to be able to get um, more than just this color in a, in a this big of a quantity because I love to embroider and sew all the time. So. But I found a deal on black thread, so I got this in bulk, um, I think a couple of years ago, and it's lasted that long. Um, if you sew a lot like I do, um, it's probably a good idea to get your threads in bulk, because um, a lot of times just going to a fabric store, um, at least my experience has been, it's been kind of pricey um, if you're someone who sews all the time. So, yeah. Let's see. I'm going to thread this needle. This music's gotten pretty epic, huh? <laughs> We're getting to the epic part of this video. You know what? I'm kind of wondering if I should make this a two-part video. Yeah, let's do that. We'll make it a two-part. I ended at 30 minutes. And let's just say thank you for joining me for part one. I guess we can save how to make a dread sleeve for a dreadlock. <laughs> for a like on a on a doll head. That's a long title. I'll just say update on dreadlock shaman healer um, head <laughs> kind of deal. Alrighty guys, thanks for joining me. Um, yeah, definitely. If you'd like to support this channel, you could donate a dollar more to my PayPal at kdaddytmama at comcast.net. 
<clears throat> and include a question you'd like to see answered on an upcoming show. It's not required, but uh, people have been asking how can they support all my channels, and that's how you can do it. <clears throat> um, yeah, to save enough for basic stuff like a camera, um, basic stuff like uh, survival, rent, utilities, bills here. California's way expensive. Um, <clears throat> also save enough for land to grow fruits and vegetables and medicinal herbs and build tree homes there. And once I get myself set up in that kind of situation, I could help others out. So that's what my plan is for that PayPal, if you're wondering. So yeah, um, I will see you in part two.